So the whole point of today's meeting, um, we have two agendas. We're gonna go over last month's um, trade log. Uh, I hope everybody kept their trade logs and notes and everything, trading journal. Like I said, that's very important. Um, and I have been doing it for years now and it helps it helps me recognize the mistakes that I've made and what works for me, what doesn't work for me, stuff like that. So that's why I encourage you, all of you to do it. Um, and I'm like, I, I think we did the same thing last month as well, where we went over my trading journal and um, find out what we need to do to improve. Uh, and some of the things that came out of that was like, okay, we, if you have small account, then we are not going to take any big trades because that will destroy your account. So you need to trade your account size. That's one of the things that we had to pay attention to. Another thing was um, if market is going down and it's weak, we have to be extra careful. And that was another thing that that came out of it. And because of that, uh, if you notice this week, this last week, uh, the whole market was in limbo and there were no clear trends, no clear trades that we could do. We, could, we still capitalize on it. We still found some good trades, but uh, we didn't take any extra risk. And that's what matters. And that's, that's why I keep the note of it. So. Let's just start. So this is our January trades. We took about um, 61 trades in totals, so about uh, three trades on average per day. Uh, 45 wins, 16 losses. So 74% success rate, which is, I would personally say it's pretty good. Uh, my, my goal always has been to reach like 80%, but um, that's pretty high. And that's pretty impossible actually to do it. But um, again, it, 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 it could be done. But the whole 75, 70 to 75% um, success rate is pretty good. Uh, once you achieve that, this is why I say, okay, focus on consistency. Now, once you achieve that sort of success ratio, uh, all you have to do is maximize your profits and minimize your losses. So if you have two or three trades, what you can do is the way I do it, let it run. You sell a little bit at 20, 30% and let the other run, sell another one at like around 60, 70% and then let the other one run with the trailing stop losses. So that's how you maximize your uh, profit and loss instead of just selling everything at once. But now again, like if you only have one contract, then take the profit at 20, 30%. I keep saying it over and over and over again because it's very important. Uh, I personally blew up two, three accounts when I first started it because of that. Because every time I made a good trade, I was greedy. And I was like, okay, it's going, it's going great. It's going up. I'm already up 60%. It might go up, if it, I will sell it at 100%, I will sell it at 80%, all that greed. And then all of a sudden it will just tank. And then I lost everything that I made that I was in profit and now I'm 20, 30% down and my stop losses are hitting and I cut it. So my success rate that way goes down almost always. And if you are paying attention, it happens a lot of time we take a trade and it goes up 20%, but we are not selling it. It goes up 30%, but we are not selling it. And then it just tanks and never comes back up. But if you have only one, then you would be out. You would be out with profit and that's how you achieve consistency. Even right now, when, I, when, I, when there are stocks that goes up 60, 600, 700%, like we, we've seen like, quite a few of those trades this month, to be honest. Uh, but we we never waited until, I personally never waited until it went to 600 or 700%. I was out at 200, 300%. Um, I would love to double my, my profit, 
but I'm not gonna take this chance um, because that's my rule. Uh, don't don't wait. Don't hope for home runs. If it happens, it happens. You will if you are consistent, you will catch those home runs without any doubt. And and that's that's what you need to do. So let's get started. Um, so this one uh, we're gonna focus on losses more than the wins because well we have plenty of wins. So this one Microsoft trades that we take. Um, I, I I remember it. I got out. Um, it, it, it was a it was a slow day. That's when we only took like three trades, and even one of those trades was the Google uh, earning play. So we got I got in at three twenty five. I didn't like the price action, so I just exited it for like fifteen cent loss. Um, and in the hindsight, it was kind of early exit, but I don't regret it because I followed my plan and I got out, no harm done. It's just 50 cent loss. Uh, this Google trade right here, that was a home run. And like, you know how I said, if you're consistent, you will catch one of these. This wasn't planned. I wasn't planning for it to go to 43, um, but it was an earning play. So it could go up, it could go end up being zero. So uh, this one went all the way to 43. And even after that, it was, I think it was like 50 something at the end and I sold it too early. Do I regret it? No, because I'm not gonna take any chances, right? Uh, so that was that this Amazon and Google, this was purely based on, I would say grid because uh, look at this, Google, Amazon, Google. We got three, four wins, like Google, 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 Amazon. So we got three, four wins in a row and I got cocky and I was like, you know what? It, it probably still gonna work out. Uh, and my notes are like, bought it towards the end of the day during low hours and should have avoided it. Four straight at the end of the day, uh, should not have taken it. And that's my take from it. Uh, because it was like we had such a good trade the same day and we were making a lot, lot of money and I got cocky and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try one more time. And I ended up making that mistake alone cost me almost $1,500. Uh, shouldn't. So that's one of the lessons um, that I would say I need to keep in mind going forward. Don't force trade at the end of the day. So I'm gonna put that down on a sticky note and stick it to my computer screen. <laughs> so I remember that, um, that to not force the trade, especially towards the end of the day. If you notice, I usually don't take any trades at the end of the day because um, anything can change is overnight. So I would rather take fresh entry the next morning rather uh, and then take a day, I mean, take a trade at the end of the day because it's almost never pay off unless it's like earning, then it's a different story. But um, other than that, especially with the expensive, like look at my entry, like $10, $10. So, the, so that's a lot of money that I put online towards the end of the day. And it exactly, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the next day, whole landscape changed and everything was going sideways or down. And that was a big loss. If I were to save those 1500, uh, this number down here would have been much bigger. So that's one lesson that's, uh, and you should all keep in mind, I already have it on my sticky note. Don't take trades at the end of the day, uh, especially the same day expiration, I mean, same week expiration. Look at this. If, February 5th expiration. So I only have, this was Wednesday. So I only had like two days left for that trade to work out. So that's added risk. It was expensive. So that's more risk. And these stocks are volatile. Amazon, Google, they goes up and down like 40, 50%. I mean, 40, $50 in a day. So those are volatile stocks. So that was another thing. So all in all, those two were very bad trades on my part and I should have avoided it. So I'm gonna keep in mind that for the next time and not take that kind of days, I mean trades. 
Um, Baba here was perfect. Uh, it didn't work out, went down 20%. Uh, I wasn't very confident in it, so I sold it. In hindsight, could have waited longer. Um, it went all the way to $8 from there. Uh, I just didn't like the price action at that time, so I should have, uh, I sold it. Uh, no regrets. I followed my plan. Loss is loss, but it is what it is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but those two loss, this two losses doesn't sting me as much as this two. And Billy, the same thing. It was, uh, we entered it and then it was just trading sideways and hit my stop loss, got out. So no, I, I don't have any bad, um, bad um, feelings about it because all these three losses, I followed my plan. And losses are part of the game, as I always say. So I don't mind those. This two, uh, definitely, it hurts a little bit because um, first, I didn't plan my trade and then I didn't get out on time. So these two were a good lesson for me. And I'm going to keep that in mind. And you should all do that the same thing. And then come around week two. And I made this sort of like the same mistake again with the Google trade here um, because yes, it was cheap. And yes, uh, Google was at around 2100 at that time. Uh, so it wasn't out of reach. And that was one of the main reason I took that trade what hurts like so it going to zero doesn't hurt me as much as me sizing up too much so that's my main road the main note here i sized up a little too much so if you were to buy just one it's okay it's not that big of a deal like yes i should have had stop losses i didn't um but then again i'm, all, I'm juggling like five, six different accounts right now. So I totally forgot to start, uh, set stop losses on that one. Uh, but my main mistake here was sizing up too much. And when you size up too much, um, your losses are ju just gonna compound. So instead of like, let's just say I bought 10, for example, I actually bought way more than that. Uh, but I bought 10, then your potential three, 310, a loss would be seven, eight hundred or three, three thousand, um, because obviously you're not gonna buy 10 at the same price. You're gonna probably try to average down at two and then again at 150 and then again at $1, hoping that it will turn around and go up. Um, but that's one of the mistakes that I always try to tell you to avoid. Like don't average down until the stock is probably like 70, 80% down and it has still time to recover. Then if you do it, it's fine. It's, it, you, what you're doing here is you are setting an, uh, odds in your favor that if it goes up even a little bit, it will be fine. But if, you, if, you do the sa if I were to do the same thing here again on this too, then I would have had lost like a lot more money because there were only two days left. So stocks usually turn around, right? Up or down. But if it, it's not gonna happen in a matter of two days, if it drops already like 70%, it's not gonna recover 70% in two days. That's just given. So at that point, you don't average down. And same thing here, uh, the expiration date is 12. So about four days left. Uh, if it dropped, say, 80% on the very first day, then yes, uh, average down. It's fine because even if it recover from that point a little bit, you're probably going to either be a break even or covering a little bit of your losses and minimize your losses. But if it does, if it goes like, let's just say it's Thursday and it's at 70, 80%, this $3 option is at like, 15 cents and you're like, oh, okay. And now I can just add, buy 10 more, excuse me, 10 more contracts. It's only $150, it's not a big deal. 
but you need to keep in mind that there is only one day left for it to recover and most likely it's not going to go there so you all you're doing is you're do, throwing that 150 dollars away because you're all, like it's almost always not gonna, like it's almost certain that it's not going to work if you were to drop on monday like 70 to 80 percent and this three dollar op, option is at say 70 cents then yeah go ahead add add one more it's fine that's how averaging work because there's still four more days for you to recover a little bit and you can either minimize your losses or even break even um, but if you do it at here on wednesday and buy at 70 or 60 and hope that it's going to recover it's most likely not going to happen and all you're doing is you're adding more money uh, to a losing trade at that time you just accept your losses and move on you don't add more money to it. Um, I, I have seen this, I have seen people in this group make the same mistake. I have personally made the same mistake as well in my early days, um, but hope is not a strategy. You have to think uh, calculatively like, okay, if I add $150 more to this losing trade, does it have enough time for it? To rec is there enough time for it to recover? no is there are only two days left then okay let's not add more money to it let's just see if it works it works if it doesn't work it's not that big of a deal because i didn't add uh, i didn't take that big of a trade but now if you let's just say you add as a wednesday and you add another 200 dollars on on thursday you add another 50 60 dollars um, to average down and this $310 trade is already like five, 600 now without you realizing it because you're just thinking about, oh, it's just $60, it's fine, I can, I can afford to lose it, but you're ballooning up your, your original loss and always keep that in mind when, when average down. I always just wanted to discuss this topic because all of you guys wants to average down. You ask me, should I average down here? Should I average down here? And this is how you make decision if you should average down or not. Because all these factors are gonna matter. And if it's already a losing trade, then you don't want to add more money to losing trade by averaging down in a way that probably is not going to work. I hope that helps. Um, so that's that was my biggest take from this trade. Um, I didn't average down personally, but I sized up too much. In the beginning when I bought it, I already, I, I went in with full size, like I think I bought 300 contracts of that uh, because it was so cheap. And after that, it just traded sideways all all week and yeah i and i didn't sell i didn't have stop loss in place so i ended up losing the whole, whole amount um so that was one of the things after that the second day we had fantastic uh snap roku octa all of that worked in our favor this Twilo trade was amazing here uh, we all banked on that <clears throat> the snap trade was great too we traded a lot of snap this week because uh, if you remember, we had the same pattern and same, I wouldn't say luck because it wasn't luck, but same pattern and same trade uh, we, were do, we did when we were trading crowd probably uh, last month or month ago, um, month before that, we traded crowd over and over and over and again. And once it stopped working, we got out. So that's what Snap was this week. I mean, this month we traded a lot of Snap. Um, but yeah, so the second week was perfect. This here, this two trade stings a little bit because yes, it was earning speculation play and after earning speculation play. So yes, I kind of figured like it, I knew it could go to zero and I was okay with it. But what stinks here is that I didn't do enough research in it. Uh, I have never traded those companies before since we started trading together. 
um, I probably traded it like when uh, Uber did it IPO, but that's it. Like I never traded Lyft before. I never traded Uber before uh, and recently actually at least. And I just got in based on earnings and news and all that. And because it was so cheap, I got in and that was a mistake. If you look at the pattern, if you look at the, all the stocks that I trade, almost always those are like stocks that I'm familiar with. I have traded before. I know how they works. I know how, what kind of volume it needs to go up, what kind of volume it, it needs to go down, what are the levels that it respect, how it works near the certain levels. I've studied those stocks long time, Roku, Okta, Twilo. I've been trading those since, it, since IPOs. Uh, so I know how they work. Um, this two stocks, I have no clue and I didn't research it enough. I didn't look at the historical levels or anything. I just blindly read, went in and it went bad, <laughs> needless to say. So both went to zero. Uh, luckily, it wasn't that expensive, so um, it didn't matter much, but I hate seeing red personally, but it's part of the game and lesson learned. Don't go in to take any position without knowing uh, a little bit at least about the levels and companies and how they trade and all that stuff and all that stuff. So that's my second biggest takeaway from um, this month so far. First was um, don't buy at the end of the day in little hours or don't force trades uh, just because you're having a good streak, don't force it. Um, and this, is, this was the second, don't go into the um, companies, don't go buy into the companies uh, just because, you know, and this was, this trade was just because like, okay, it's cheap. That's not gonna hurt me. And that, that's, that's exactly what it was. And you guys sh should do the same thing as well. Like before you enter any companies, and I always say this, don't buy into hypes because you don't know anything about any of those companies. You're just blindly either going in, following the hype that's generated over the internet, in forums, people are talking about it, all that stuff doesn't matter. It goes up a thousand percent, it doesn't matter. Only get into the companies that you're familiar with, you know how it works, you have studied it a little bit, then you go in. Don't just go in because internet is telling you to do it or because some forum on Reddit is telling you to do it. That's how you're going to blow up your account and lose your entire savings because it's, it's almost always the case where people will take position and then pump it. If you see anybody like, okay, like GME2, I can guarantee you or Wall Street or Bats or any of those forum, I can guarantee you that they took the position and then they pump it. So what happens is that, okay, I bought it at $2 and then I start pumping it and a bunch of people join in and all of a sudden, all of a sudden stock is at $50. I'm not gonna wait around. I'm gonna cash my position at $50. Doesn't matter if it goes to 100, I'm gonna cash in and I'm gonna leave. And uh, there's this anonymous quote uh, that Rajiv shared, I think, the other day. Bears make money, uh, bulls make money, pigs get slaughtered. So if you're a pig, if you're just following people blindly on internet, on Twitter, or anywhere, um, you're going to end up losing money. So be careful with that. And this, too, were like the hype stock for me, at least because... I saw them, Uber reported good earning, blah, 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 blah. And I got in and I lost money. So that was, that was a mistake on my part. And yeah, so that, that was the biggest lesson that I learned uh, after that. The Baidu stock here, 
perfect trade. It didn't work out. We got out $30 loss. It was expected stop loss hit. I'm out. We just made another buy due trade that morning and we made a good good return on that one. So no regrets. Uh, Amazon here. This was 26 and this was another trade that I took uh, I think towards the end of the day and I should not have. And the, the problem happened is that could have sold it earlier when it was break even. It actually went to like 28 or 29 and I still didn't sell it. It went down almost to 13 or 15. It came back up again, uh, fortunately. And so I sold it at like around 23 and recovered most of my losses. Otherwise this could have been disaster, but uh, I sold it at 300. So the loss wasn't that big, but the lesson was, and that was that I didn't follow my own 20 to 30% rule. And I should have sold it when it went to 28, 29, I think, and cash out at least some of the position, and then it would have been fine. I didn't do it. Uh, I didn't take that big of a loss, so that's a good thing. But um, same thing. Uh, that I want to tell everybody, like if you take a big cap trade like that, don't wait that just because you risk 2,600, your return should be six, 700 or any of, it doesn't work that way. Always 20 to 30% rule, follow it and you will be fine. I should have sold it at 300 and I would have made 300 but I didn't and I ended up losing, uh, losing $300. So that was another lesson from last month's trading that the, it was this. Um, Snap was okay. Uh, we all took this trade. It went almost to like 20 cents. Uh, it was gonna expire the next, the same day. And then it, it made the move that we all have been waiting for. And I sold it at 50 cents. A lot of you guys sold it at nine, 90 cents or even dollar ten, dollar twenty. Excuse me. And it ended up being a good trade, um, and and that's what happens when you are confident and and in stock like um, snaps. So why did I wait it in snaps and didn't sell it? Uh, and I think one of you commented that, okay, don't, don't sell the stock until it, like, let it go to zero. And it doesn't work that way. Um, why didn't I sell the snap and respected my stop losses? One, I didn't have stop losses on that one because, well, it was cheap uh, to begin with. And I averaged down quite a bit on that one. Um, and the, the reason was, our strike price was 65 and stock, the snap was, snap never dipped below like around 62 or 61 as far as I remember, I could be wrong, but it was it was still around that. And when and we all know when snap moves, it moves uh, four or $5 in blink of an eye and then come back down. Uh, we, I knew that and that was my plan uh, since I bought it that I'm just going to wait until it moves to, um, to over 64. And it did on that day and we all cashed out. So the, so if you buy a stock, if you buy an option and the strike price is closer to where it is right now, then it might not be, and it's cheap, then it might not be a way, bad idea to wait it out. That doesn't always work. If it's like $26 stock, like Amazon, 3,400 strike price and stock is trading at 3,100, you can almost always be sure that it's not gonna jump $400 in a day or two. But if stock is like 62 and your strike price is 65, then there is a high chance that it's gonna jump and cross your strike price pretty soon. Or it could do it in like one day. Um, and, and Disney was another dad trade. I didn't, I haven't been trading Disney that much. 
the only reason I traded it was because it was behaving good and it was trending up. Uh, in hindsight, I should not have done it because I don't know enough about that stock for me to take position in it. Um, I don't just play trends. I don't just be like, okay, this stock is going up, so I'm going to get in. Yes, I, I always say trade the trend, but I probably should add that trade the trend in a stock that you know. <laughs> um, but in this one, I didn't know much about it. Uh, but again, it was pretty cheap, so not that much damage. And it's just try, uh, traded sideways. Size was perfect, price was too. So no, no harm in letting it go to zero. Um, not that big of a loss. After you make good trades all week, a little bit of here and there, uh, you can take some chances to see if it works out. If it doesn't, you still end up in profit. And that was the whole plan for it. All right, anybody have any question? All right, if not, uh, we're gonna move forward. And week three, if you look at the sizes, like the number of trades that we were taking compared to week one, week two, and then week three, you will be surprised like how little or like the number of trades is very, very low. And that's because that's when markets started acting crazy. And if you go back to January and see all this trades, all this red, and I mentioned that, that now we, and this was another week where market tanked and we lost a lot of money. This was another week where all the GME drama happened and we lost a lot of money. So this, this month I knew and I learned my lesson and I had it in my mind that, okay, if markets start, start acting strange and going down, then I'm gonna be very, very careful and not take any ridiculous trade that I should be taking. I would take the other times, but if it market is crashing or market is trading sideways or there is just in limbo, then you start have to, like, you have to be careful. Right, so I didn't want to do all this money that I make, I didn't want to throw it away. So what I did was like after the first day, I slowed down. I only take it quality trades. I only take it, uh, I only took the trades that I believe in. So this first day, first day we took like five trades and that's when it started acting funky, but it still worked out for most part. Like PayPal worked great, Tesla, we took it, but we got out like in time, no harm done over there. Follow stop losses work out perfectly. Uh, Twilo worked out great. Uh, Google was, uh, Google went to zero. Uh, we took that trade and small position risky, but I was just using profit from the earlier uh, from, I think it was, which trade was it? I forgot but made good money in that trade. And I was just using the profit, so no, no, no big deal. And again, it was cheap, like $2.50, so uh, not a big deal. Billy worked out great. Uh, and then the next day I started being careful and I was like, okay, I'm only gonna take quality trade. I'm not gonna take anything that's, um, that doesn't work in my favor. So we only took shop twice, both the time it worked perfectly. Uh, I believe a lot of us made money. Um, the first time I did, we did it, it went like both, both the same option. Like first time I did it, it went from $8 to like 37 and then it came back down. And then I bought it again at like 950 and it went all the way to 59 or 60. That was that was a great trade. And I think, I believe a lot of us make money in that one. Uh, and that was my focus on, on that entire day. The next day, same thing. We traded shop again, we made money. Um, and the Tesla, we made money again. And the Google, I tried to do it again on the Google. 
but that one didn't work out and that went to zero. But because of this, all this quality trade here, that loss didn't sting me much. And I was like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. Uh, but this is what you need to be doing. If you know that market is in limbo, if you know that uh, we don't have any good news, uh, market moving news, we, we didn't last two weeks, we had no absolutely zero market, market moving news. Uh, so market was in limbo. It didn't know where to go. It didn't know what to do. And I think, I believe one of that's, that was one of the reason why a treasury bond news or that came out affected markets so much because there were there was no other catalyst to move the market because this has happened before it has reached the high before a lot of time um, but it has never had um, any big impact on the market itself uh, big impact as in where markets sold off uh, but it this time it did because we didn't have any other big catalyst. Uh, we might get it again next, hopefully this month, next couple of weeks um, with the stimulus check and stimulus package, but we didn't have that last two weeks. So um, that's why it started acting crazy. And these are the only trades we took and we still and I had only like three bad trades. One of them was actually perfect. And if you think about it, only two. Uh, comes week four, I was full on my guard. I decided that I'm not going to give back my profit. I'm not going to force trade. I'm not going to take, take any unnecessary risk, no matter what's happening, no matter what other people are doing. Um, and it worked out. If you think we only had one bad trade in Docu, uh, and I think a second round of Bar uh, Baidu, I think I'm still holding uh, half of Baidu, so that's red right now, and the SQ, that's red right now, but we still have time uh, for that. And that's why this week, after very first day, I started taking next week. Market was tanking, so I started taking like couple of weeks, two weeks, three weeks out of um, calls because I didn't want to take that risk of uh, with the options expiring the same week. Um, that's added risk and I didn't want to do it. Um, so here everything worked out, Netflix, Twilo, Shop. We traded Netflix extensively that day and it worked out. Docu didn't work out, uh, but that's, well, we took multiple other trades, so it's fine. No regrets. It hit my stop losses. I followed my plan and I got out. Uh, Roku, Snap, Baidu the next day worked out. Whole market was tanking. We were banking. Um, so that was perfect. Follow the plan. Picked up a couple of stocks that were trending up, following the trend line, the stocks that I was familiar with. And that's another very important things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to make money when whole market is tanking, then you need to focus on stocks that you're familiar with, not stocks. Oh, uh, GME is going up 60, 70% or whatever, or any other stock for that matter is going up this much, this much, this much. But key to making market, key to making in the tanking market is to focus on the stocks that matters, to focus on the stocks that you know you're familiar with. And that's how you're gonna do it because you know how they behave. You know uh, what are the critical levels and all that. And that's how you are going to uh, make money. Um, so that, that's, that's what matters. And that's how we banked when the whole stock market tanked. Uh, and the same thing the next day, we only um, traded one stock and that was SQ. The first round, it went great. We made a lot of money. Second round, we are still holding because it's tanked from there. 
but if it uh, if it doesn't come back up and if i lose like 334 dollars here because of the excellent day that we had before and pretty much the whole week when the market was not doing great um it helped it's gonna help it's not gonna it's gonna ding that much our accounts uh and even if this half of baidu doesn't work out uh the other half already did and it's probably either gonna even out like break even or you a little bit more loss but because i sold my half of my size at profit by following my rule of taking 20 to 30 to 50 percent profit right away it's gonna save me it's not gonna hurt me like i'm not gonna lose the whole amount does that i hope that makes sense um but yeah so this is how i go through my um trade log this is how i know what mistake i made so i'm gonna so from today's uh, from last month's uh, trade log the what i need to be better at is not taking trades uh in last hour of the day unless i have a very very good reason to not force trade just because it's been working out great um don't enter into the trades or don't take trades into the stock you're not familiar with or you haven't done re research in enough uh and yeah everything else was pretty good so those are the three big takeouts for me and if i look at the other things then i could i could say that uh i need to avoid taking like big uh number like big trades but again like i did it 30 dollars 21 dollars uh this 26 didn't work out 33 dollars 17 dollars and it all worked in my favor so one trade out of five didn't work so i'm not gonna let that stop me from taking uh high higher premium trades uh, but if you have a small account you should avoid it because this one just if you take let's just say you didn't take any of the trade and this 26 dollar trade that you took in amazon and you didn't manage to sell it at the right point it's going to wreck your account so why take those chances you have plenty of trades that are like so i i make it a point uh, before we started this group like i pretty much traded everything i wanted and i never paid attention or very less attention to cheaper trade um, but now i trade anywhere from dollar 62 or dollar 25 to 30 dollars uh, and the reason i do it is because it will give you all of you enough to work with so if you have a smaller account you can still just trade smaller two dollar three dollar four dollar uh, premium options trade uh, and if you have a bigger account you can take bigger trade as well and you're not restricted to smaller size or a bigger size and, and there's pl plenty for everybody now if, now we i personally took about 61 trades in a month you don't have to do that if your account is smaller you can be more vigilant and you can be more selective and maybe take say four trades a week what do you need to focus on is i i post this pnl and all that uh this this whole uh spreadsheet um on our chat room what you can do is you can just go through this and see what what would work for you what would um fit in your plan so let's just say if i were you right then i would be like okay i would just wait for i'm just waiting for a week right i mean you're new you don't know nothing about me you don't know nothing about my trading style or anything like that you haven't been here with us for a couple of couple of months right so what I would do is I would just wait for a week, right? I post my trade logs, it's all there, uh, always with entry. You can even look at the time I entered and all that. But I would be like, okay, 
So he traded snaps four times. So, and all four times the first week was great. It made profit. So if I take the snap fifth time and you take it with me, you're going to make profit because there is a high chance. I made profit with snap, uh, snap trade four times because I'm, I know the levels. Uh, it has worked. It's not 100% guarantee that fifth time it's going to work, but there is a high chance that it's going to work. So fifth and sixth, and then where is the snap again? Uh, and then seventh time it failed. But up until six times after I take it three, four times and you took it again, there is a high chance that it's going to work. And then you can look for another stocks like that. Okay, Roku, it worked or Billy, it's been working great for us, or Baba, it's been working great for us. So you can pick and choose. If I, and if I were you and I'm looking, okay, uh, he took trade in Lyft and Uber, but he has never done that before, then don't take it. <laughs> don't take it. Because uh, I, I, I like to play around. I, as you guys know, I always take trades in stocks I'm familiar with. I don't take random trades. I don't take, just jump on a bandwagon and trades whatever the, uh, whatever the stocks that's going up. I never do that um, because it, it, it's, it has never worked for me. Uh, not saying that it won't work for you, uh, but it has never worked for me personally. But just by looking at this, you can know that some of the stocks and some of these trends almost always like there is a high probability that it's going to work so focus on that so if it's week two well yeah sometimes there are more losses than i would like but it's just tough week to trade and that's part of the game and then there are like no losses maybe just one loss or two or three losses but if you were to like okay shop has worked great for us before billy almost always worked for us before so you can pick and choose, but let's just say you take three trades every week and that's 12 trades a month and three doesn't work and another eight work. You're still going to end up with like at least thousand dollar a month. And that's my point. Like you can pick and choose, but you can do it smartly. You don't have to take every single trade. You can. And if you do, you, this is what you would end up with. But let's just say you're not available to trade the whole time. Uh, your job has started. Now the pandemic is about to be over. All you have to do is pick and choose, like pick one or two or three or four trades a, a week. And you can still walk away with thousand dollar. That's probably your like food money for a month. Uh, and that's, that's my point. Um, but creating this journal will help you see the bigger picture will help you define uh, like your trading plan more accurately and it will help you see your mistake like even after eight years of trading i'm still making silly mistakes like entering in a stock that i'm not familiar with or or forcing the trades at the end of the day and that's okay I'm never going to be perfect. What my goal is and what your goal should be is to get as close to perfect as possible. And 75% win rate is pretty darn close. Uh, and that's, that's what I want you all to do. Focus on consistency and the profits will come with it. Once you're consistent, instead of taking one contract, you can start taking two and your profit will double. You start taking three and your profit will go up more and more and more. But if you don't have that base of being consistent, then on one trade, you're gonna make six, $7,000 and then you will make six or seven bad trades that will chunk, that will eat like three or $400 every time. And at the end of the month, even, you, even if you had that one great trade, you're going to end up losing, you're going to end up with negative balance. And, and that's because you were not consistent. You might get lucky here and there, you might make money here and there, but without consistency, you will not last long in this game.
and that's what your focus should be. And that's where keeping a trading journal, looking back at your mistakes, looking at back, looking back at what worked, what didn't work, what you could have done better will help you get better every month, a little by little. This is a long-term game. If you think that you're gonna come in and start making three, $4,000 in a month, um, that's not gonna work. Uh, it doesn't work in any, any, occup uh, any occupation, occupation other than casino. You can go in and you can get lucky and you will make money, but any other profession or any other where, place where you can make money, it's not going to be overnight. You have to be consistent and you have to get better a little at a time. Superstars are not born in a day. They are built over time, over the years. And I want you all to be superstar in trading. So focus on that. Okay, any questions while I drink water? Hey, Ish, I had a question. Uh, like, uh, since we know uh, it's just a correction, it's not a bearish market yet, but if the market is going down for like a couple of days or more, uh, is it uh, a good idea to buy some puts in a quick in and out or it's very risky because it's still not a bearish market it's just a correction uh, i don't um i don't buy <coughs> puts <coughs> excuse me i don't buy puts unless it's a bearish market um the reason is that it could go against you in a matter of time like let's just say you uh, on Thursday market went down and you started buying puts and we saw a bounce, really good bounce on Friday, right? And that's what's gonna happen when it's not a bearish market. Like you buy puts and the next day it's gonna jump or in two days it's gonna jump. In and out trade is fine. Um, for example, Tesla, I always say like, okay, if Tesla were to break 800, it's gonna to go to 780. If it breaks 780, the next level is 766. You can play levels like that very, very quickly, right? But then again, Tesla went to 760 and then bounced back again to 800 in no time. So unless it's a bearish market, unless the panic has come into the play, um, Playing puts is a little bit more riskier. I always say uh, tra trade the trend, but not the short-term trend, the long-term trend. And long-term trend right now is up. Once it's down, then that's all you, I'm, then I will be buying puts on every single um, run up because the market is bearish. Um, the, the overall sentiment is uh, sell. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Right now, we are not there yet, so I'm not doing it. I would still do it, like if on Monday, say market is again, start tanking, then I might dabble into it or very, very safely, but I won't go full in on put side. And because it, it can turn the trend, like it, it can turn the trend like in no time and then um, you will lose money. I would rather be on the call side because knowing that the overall trend is still bullish, if I buy two weeks out, there's a high chance that it's going to bounce back up. Makes so, sense. thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Nope. All right. So, let's move on to the second part of this webinar and that's how to set up your screeners. So for screeners, like if you don't have it built in like I do in my E-Trade platform, you can utilize this TradingView um, website. It, it's free and uh, it's pretty useful and you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. Um, the way you can do it and the way I usually do it 
is I go here in outperforming SMA 50. That's one of the very, very basic and first um, indicator that tells you that the trend for that particular stock is bullish or neutral at the least. So like if you look at any of this rating, most of them are buy rating. And why do they have buy rating? Because the, the trend is up. And 50 SMA is like one of the first um, indicator that tells you that, okay, the trend is bullish. So that's what I use. Uh, and after that, what you can do is you can apply additional um, uh, filters, right? So exchange, that's kind of go, given OTC, I don't play in OTC because it's like, it's not regulated market, so I don't care about it. And options are kind of like whatever. Uh, market capitalization, uh, you don't want to, I personally, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about me and then you can draw your own conclusion. You can set your own parameters and everything. But for me, market capitalization minimum is about a million or two. So I'll, I would put a, a billion or two. So I'll put in one billion. Uh, that's, that's like a lower end of cheaper stocks uh, with the great uh, backup. So if it's a 50 million company, you can be sure that it can go out of business anytime and you would never know. And this is not just for the option, this is for stocks. Uh, options is another because option, there is no option screeners yet. There are some sites, websites that are like um, in very early stages of development. So I don't trust them, I do my own work, um, but this is, this is the minimum criteria that you can do. Uh, what else you wanna do is uh, volume. So volume you wanna set at least over 500K, which usually if it's that big of a volume, then it will give you uh, more stock that has option, um, uh, option chains basically. Now, Ratings, you can again select here. So I usually do strong buy, buy or neutral. Uh, I don't care about the stocks that, are, that has sell rating. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can skip this one. Uh, even if it's sell rating, it could still be a good buy. So it's okay if you don't select this one, right? Um, that's for me, that's what I do, but they're like one month low, three month high, new 52 week high. Sometimes I use that uh, to find what stock made a new 52 high, uh, new 52 week high. Uh, average daily volume, you can do that uh, here as well. So this is total volume. This is average volume on the daily. I don't really pay attention to that because it fluctuate a lot. Sometimes when stock is going up, it will have, um, say the total volume of the stock usually is like about a million. And on one day it goes up to 10 million, but the average is not gonna matter as much because your volume, um, filter here will pick it up. It will pick up that tick. So this doesn't matter unless you're looking for like a long-term uh, investment. So I don't pay too much attention to that. And you can play all around with like with all this uh, filters on your own time. Uh, I'm just showing you what I personally um, put in my folder to find the stocks basically. And then all this like um, EPS, oscillators, Bollinger Band. I, I don't use any of that because it's just too much noise for me. <laughs> um, if you're in Canada, you can select the countries here and it will show you that country's particular stocks. 
So if you want to find Canadian stocks, uh, go here, select the country. It should give you um, the Canadian stocks or Canadian listed stocks. Uh, all this dividends. And so if you want to find good paying dividend stocks, you come here, select that, and it will tell you that exponential moving average and all that. I don't care about it right now because I already put it over the simple moving average. Exponential is usually useful for day trading and intra trading, uh, intraday trading because it puts more weight towards the end of the day. I mean, end of the range, rather than distributing it equally throughout the number of days that you selected. Uh, don't even know what goodwill is, to be honest. Uh, this gross profit margin, all this stuff is. Uh, some of them I like. I don't even know what that means. Um, and I never used it. It never affected my um, my performance, so I don't care about it. Net income, you can use it when you're searching for uh, companies that are releasing earnings soon, and if you want to play earnings. Um, but yeah, so pre-market change. This tickers, you can see like this this whole section here. You can select if you are selecting for the pre-market and post-market players. You can select it from there. So there's tons and tons of simple moving average, 10 day, 30 day, 20 days, you can do that. We already selected the preset um, uh, filter for that. So we don't have to worry about that here. Um, Volatility, you can select it below or equal to, you can find it, um, up, supply the values here and year to date performance and all that volume price. So there's a lot going on in this, in this tickers, but I don't utilize all of that. Um, so I, that's all I do. There are other ones like descriptive, it's, this is all you can go here uh, to find the technicals only, percentage change and all that. Um, but that, this is what I do personally. And now if you look at it, uh, it shows you, these are the industries that are like below, like from 1 billion and above. Now this is a, this is a lot. So uh, like 1900. So I do, what I do here is I put market cap a little bit higher for my personal use because I don't really care about smaller size companies because even the smaller size companies right now are like 10 billion uh, in, um, in valuation. And now from here, what you can do is you can select the sectors. So if you go here and where is it? sectors. So I select what I'm interested in a lot of sectors, like it's not all the sectors that pay. Um, like, I don't pay attention to all the sectors. Um, there are some sectors that work well for me, technology, transportation, health, finance, and electrical technology. Those are some of the ones that I like. You don't have to like all of them. And now you have this list of 354 matches, which is pretty good, right? And now you're just gonna select whatever you like. Be like, okay. Sorry. And there you go. This is the list. And now you just select on it. Boom, Twitter, it's going up, perfect. Uh, HPQ, uptrend all in all, perfect. And now you draw the line. Now you open the full feature chart and, and then continue here. And boom, you, you can draw your levels and all that here. Um, then Oracle, like if any, because of our, our filters that we selected, most of the stocks, if not like most, 
all of its stocks are going to be in the uptrend. You pick and it's going to be an uptrend. Any stocks that you pick. And now you just draw a level on there. And what's going to happen is that uh, this is the law. And then you draw levels on this, like right here, right here. So if let's just say uh, you were interested in Delta then you select this one, uh, have I, I don't think I have logged into my account. No, I, I have, but like you go here and you draw a line here. Let's just say right here. And there is a way for you to add alert and it will alert you when Del, uh, Delta Airlines goes to that level and that could be your buy level. And then you just buy it at that level. So this is what I do personally uh, on my E-Trade um, because I have all these features in my E-Trade, but I still come to TradingView to find new stocks that are making new trends. So if you go through this, like Visa and all that, it's been trending, it's been going nice. And you can just come here and may find this all, this, all the stocks that are you, you interested in. This is the stock that we have been seeing, AL, UL. Right now, airline companies are, are going up. So these are all, so all the airline stocks right here, Southwest, American, United. Um, you will see that trend here too, if you select it. Um, if I go back here and, and, and just select, let's just say uh, this, then I'll see all the electric technology services and techno electric technology and electric technology and technology services is what I'll see. HP, Twitter, Oracle, the stocks that we are familiar with. Uh, you can do it by this, Google, Google. Um, I don't know this Melly, but I'll look into it now that I'm interested in it. It all went down, but the ratings are buy. So the, the analyst sentiment right now is buy. And that's what interests me here. And I'll be like, okay, LRCX is something, or now is another one, NVDA, AVGO, um, FICO, let's just pick Twilio for now. Nice uptrend, it went down a little bit and it came back up like $15 is a 392 right now. Perfect. And then you come down here. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the ideas uh, because it's like indi individual people's ideas. Um, I don't, you can if you want, but I usually don't pay attention to, to that. What I pay attention to, excuse me, is this. This will give you all the financial information that you need on the company. Net income, basic EPAs, gross profit, total revenue, free cash flow, last year's revenue, 52 high, 52 week high, 52 week low, uh, Average 10 day volume and totals to share outstanding is 154. Uh, all this is a good information, um, especially if you are planning to uh, buy the shares, not the options itself, but to buy the shares. And this is very, very helpful. Um, this is like, it's whatever. I don't pay too much attention to that. Um, this is give you just basically start news information that's going on for that particular stock. Uh, a lot of good information. If you want to go more financial balance sheet, income statement, cash flow earnings, last few earnings, income statement, everything is here. Very, very good information. And this is how I personally find new stocks. And this is how I personally do it. And again, you don't have to do this way, but this website is your go-to place to find everything that you need to about stock, what's going up, what's going at, what's going down and all that. 
And again, this is one week time frame. You can change the time frame here as well. So if you select one minute, it will this list will keep refreshing one minute. I mean, you have to change the seller, refresh every minute, refresh every ten seconds, all that. But I usually don't do it in live time because I'm more uh, paying more attention to E Trade or where I draw my charts and stuff. Uh, and think or swim where I do my buying and selling. So I don't have time to do that during the live, um, the live trading hours, but here you can come, you can do one month and it will refresh and give you everything for one month, basically. So uh, yeah, any questions? And you can even download this list from here. Um, what else is there? enable alerts, you can put the alerts on it. Uh, you can put alerts on uh, single stocks from here that will alert you. If you enable desktop not notification, it will alert you there. Uh, if you don't wanna use this, you can save your screeners. So this is my, I already selected it. This is outperforming 50 SMA, that's my saved. Uh, this is my pre-market, this is my Canadian outperforming. Um, but you can just select the pre one, predetermined one, like top gainers, you know, and it will tell you the top gainers like URGO in last one month, it has gone up like 700%. Uh, volume is 8.60. I'm not too interested, we can check it out and look at it, boom, boom. So it's like, whatever, not interested in that one. Uh, again, once you do top gainer, you can come here and select the volume to be like over 1 million and capital to be over 2 billion. It'll filter out and boom, o OCGN. It's, it's been kind of going up and down, not too interested, right? Same thing, it's going up, it came down nicely. So if it goes back to this level or this level right here, I'm gonna set a um, alert here. Alert, there you go, alert is set, boom. Very easy to do that, alert. Another alert is set. So when it gets to that level, it's gonna give me an alert and I'll be like, okay, this is my buy point. Do I wanna buy it based on current condition? Yes, then I would get into it. Uh, if don't, then that's up to you. Fisker, I think that popped up last Friday on my scanner and boom, this is why it went all the way. It blew up basically. But again, you have to keep in mind that not all the stocks are like quality play. Fisker has a look at the balance sheet and you would realize why it's not a quality play. 10 million in negative, negative 10 million in net income, negative 10, uh, 154K in gross profit. And that's their income stakes, which looks pretty shitty to me. Number of employees two, which is even worse. So do I wanna put my money into a, star, uh, a company that has two number of employees? Uh, probably not. So I move on and go to something else. Let's go through the list, GT, Goodyear. Uh, that's pretty decent chart. I'll set an alert right here. So if it comes back down, then I'll buy at this level, see how it works at that point. If you look at the GT, now that's the stocks that I would probably be interested in, 3.92 billion market value, uh, number of employees 62K, basic EPS, uh, gross profit 159 million, last year's revenue 12 billion. Decent company, not gonna go out of business, not gonna lose steam in a in a week or so. So if it comes down here, I might be interested in to buy it again. I'll keep that on uh, on on my uh, photo. Um, Twitter Twitter has up in one month like 52 percent strong buy rating. So I put that on my watch list and this is how you do it. There's so much more I can talk about. Uh, not all that matters, but basically you can come here and you can select all time high uh, if you want. 
and then you will get a bunch of this. You add additional filter to it and you will find um, quality, quality stocks that you can look into and trend. Now, once I go here and I find, I make a list of stocks that I'm interested in, now I go on my E-Trade during the lab hours and see how the option changes, uh, chain is. If that option change appeals to me, then I'll be like, okay, now I'm gonna put that on my final, final watch list. If that option change is not appealing, not good volume, um, some of the stock has option chains that like one or two months out, um, I don't wanna buy that. So, and that's my another level of filter before it goes to my, my last E-Trade watch list. That's like basically the, uh, the main one. Uh, but yeah, so this is the whole exercise that you can do and you can find stocks on your own and you can utilize this for your benefit, however you see fit. Uh, any questions? Nope. Okay, why well, I just wanted to uh, let, let, let everybody know too, you know, with trading view, I think as far as like alerts go and stuff, you have to buy the pro from what I know, but everything else like the stock screener is free. Just wanted everybody to know that. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, mine is pro account. So uh, I wasn't sure about that. Thank you for letting us know. But again, stock screener is free. So you can you can take that stock and I'll set alerts on your own system on your own platform and, and that should work. Yeah, also like the last thing you see that um those icons all the way on the right, it was something I used to use, it's pretty cool. Like you see- Yeah, the, it's the uh, news and stuff, it based on your watch list though. You, you know the, the third one, sorry, the little, that one right there, this one's awesome because it has the volume gainers of the day, the percent gainers and it keeps it simple and it keeps um. Yeah, I have that build up in my, my E-Trade. I don't pay attention, like you can, like if you're, if you're trading from, let's just say a mobile app, or if you're trading from a platform that doesn't have screeners, yeah. uh, stuff like that, then you can use it. But again, I personally don't like to use the built-in one because mm -hmm. again, like SOS, you don't know what that is, you know? That's like true. XTNT, you don't know what that is. It's like $4 stocks, which industry it is, um, how like I like doing this way is because I can control the criteria. Yeah, if you do this way, there is only one criteria, which is highest volume, right? Or yeah. highest percent in change. Which which uh, sector um, was the which sector was the yeah, the number like was the capital um, capitalized market capital for that company? Uh, all that stuff also matters a lot. Um, that's why I personally never use it because I don't have any control over it and I'm a control freak. So um, you can use it. It, could, it would give you an idea, but you do, it won't tell you anything about the company itself. It will just tell you that, okay, it went up 124%. But anything about that company, you don't know. So that's why I personally don't use it and I don't recommend using it um, because of that reason. It's not that you could use it, it's fine. I use it on E-Trade uh, for a quick glance, um, but if you're building a watch list for yourself for say tomorrow or for coming days, then this is the way to go. Sure, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because this way, this gives you more control over and more filtration, like you can filter it more. Like I personally am not interested in anything over 2 billion or 10 billion company. So I don't care if the 50 million company went 800% up, I'm still not going to trade it because I don't care about it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this way it gives me more control over what I'm looking for and it narrows down the list more and more. So if I do this all time high and 
um, 2 billion market value, there are only 30 names that I need to look at. And, and I might find one or two good pattern in it and that will go on my watch list. Yeah, that's a good point. This, uh, the screener is actually really nice on the trading view. Yes. Very easy to use for sure. Yes, very easy to use. But this is how I find the stocks to trade, basically. I, it's this, I, what I told you, it's still very loose criteria. My criteria is usually very tight, like very, um, very narrow, so that the companies I end up with are like um, the one that I would probably be most interested in. I usually have seven or eight filters set up here so that I, I end up with like 30, 40 companies and then I pay attention to those companies because those meets all my criteria. And this one right here is the, uh, where is it? Volume, very important. This is the volume here. You have to uh, pay very attention to that. So the, if it's less than 50K or if it's less than 1 million in volume, I don't care about that company because if the stocks are trading less than one volume, then for options, it's not gonna be good, right? So if I'm trading options, I need this volume to be high. So sometimes I select even two, three, five million in volume because otherwise their option chain is gonna suck and it's not gonna matter much, it's gonna waste my time. So, so this is what I, one of the other things I strong buy by neutral at most. Uh, what else? Uh, the, 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 the. Uh, sector, I usually don't pay attention to uh, distribution services, um, miscellaneous, all that. I don't pay attention to because it doesn't matter. Producer manufacturing, process industry, um, I, the only thing I do is retail, retail, technology, finance, electrical, uh, consumer services, and communication. Those are my main sector that I trade. Uh, other than that, I don't pay much attention to it unless it's very, very, very appealing. So I said another one, it's that one. Um, what else? I, you can still select this one, percentage of five minutes percentage change is more than this or below this. Um, I don't use the screeners during the t uh, market hour, so it doesn't matter to me. But if you're using this as your primary screener, then you can utilize this too. Um, and there's... Um, What else do I select? Gap percentage. Um, usually my, uh, in the morning I do this to see which stocks has gapped up from previous day's close. So you can select like this to say 5% and it will, it will, so now it's from 13 to it's like 15. Um, I don't, worry too much about gross profit, uh, all that. Um, oh, there was another one. Relative strength index, you can put that one as well. Seven or 14, you can put 70%. Uh, that tells you the overbought stocks, if you put 30% or something like that, it tells you oversold stocks. Um, I use it very rarely, so it doesn't matter to me, uh, but you can do that. 
this is the shares float. A shares float means that how many shares are tradable. Uh, so that's the total float. So if it's like say 100 million or like 50 million or 30 million, that means this stocks, this two stock has um, a float of $300, I mean 300 million or more um, stocks available for trading. So you can select that one as well. Um, and that's, that's it. I, it depends on my, what I'm looking for or what I'm trying to find. I select this um, filters based on that, but now I have eight filters and I have only 16 charts to look through. And, and all these companies, I can be sure that they are very solid. All, all of them are buy rating. All of them are green right now. All of them are in the sector that I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, and yeah, so, and none of, if you look at it, none of these companies are four, five, six dollars because we selected that the rev, the volume and the market capitalization on over 2 billion, meaning that it's, it's, it's going to be a bigger company. It's not going to be a company that's based in a garage or something. So now you go through the list, look at, look at how beautiful this trend is. And it's like almost near all time highs. So if it breaks above that, so I'll, I'll train, I'll set my, alert here if it breaks above that it will alert me and if it breaks above 44 there is a high chance that it's going to go to gap up to 46 or 48 now i take this bldr put, um, go to my e-trade see how the option chains look if it looks good then i will put it on my final watch list and if it doesn't then that's it uh come here dell another one monster company look at the beautiful chart so when we are in bullish market, this is what you want to look for, the chart that's going up. If there is a chart that going down, I don't pay attention to it. I don't buy it. No matter what it is, no matter how down it is, unless remember that Baba trade that we did, it was going up and then it dropped all of a sudden for a knee jerk uh, reaction to like 45 or 50 that's a different story because Alibaba is a strong company and it went down that much because of some silly, silly reason. See, it was going up like, like crazy like this and then all of a sudden it dropped like up to here and then we traded this, this and that. Was it this one or something? But yeah, it was going up until that point and then it goes down and now we have stopped trading Baba because this, the chart itself is broken to me now. So I don't care about it. That was the last time we traded Baba, I believe, uh, or maybe one time after that. But this chart, I would not trade it because I can't tell which direction it's going into. Is it bullish? Is it try sideways? Is it going down? I don't know, so I'm gonna avoid it. And that's how I find stocks to trade this. You can be sure that even if there is a downtrend here, the overall trend is up. So there's a high chance that it's gonna continue going up. And if you look at this one, like this is the all time like high at this point, when it went up there, it, it went up quite big, right? So this is the all time high. There's like one, two, three, almost four tops, a little difference here, but if it goes up here, and there is a high chance that it's going to go at least a dollar or two up. And that's it for me. I hope setting the screeners and finding the stocks that you're interested in. Um, this helped. Uh, any questions you guys have for me? All right, if not, then let's call it a day. And hopefully this will help you guys both how to utilize trade log for your benefit and for learning purposes and for not making the same mistakes again and setting up the screeners as well. Um, this is how you can find the stocks. And again, if you find something 
and you're not sure, put it in the room, bring it to my attention. Maybe we all can trade it together, you know? Um, I do this exercise pretty much daily, but there are still times where I miss stocks and I miss trends because I can't trade everything. But if you bring things to my attention, then um, I can give you my feedback and we can all discuss it. And that's how you're gonna improve and that's how you're gonna learn how to find traders on your own and take them. And that's what I want all for all of you to be self-reliant and to start taking trades on your own uh, as well as along with me. And that's how we all move forward. All right. Um, yeah, sounds good. Hey, uh, wow, I was just gonna say, you know um, how we're talking about a channel, um, just like for, for stuff like this then where we can share stocks and charts. And so it doesn't get flooded in the live trading discussion. You think we... Yeah. Yes, I yes, I will go ahead and uh, create that channel. But you guys need to start posting first. That's true. <laughs> I, I don't see a lot of you posting. So, um, but I will go ahead and create that channel uh, and welcome all of you to post your own ideas over there. Okay. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, any other question, you guys? Oh, good. 